Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is my brother's new 2000 Toyota Tundra. And today, I'm gonna tell you guys why he bought this instead of a Ford, Chevy, Ram, or Nissan. For some of you longtime viewers, I am unashamed to admit, yes, I am totally trying to recreate the success of my original Tacoma review, but I have a feeling just like a Hollywood remake, you'll come out of this video like, nah, the original was better. So I'll be fully transparent up front with you guys. We've had this truck for a week and a half and it's been really good to us, but it's a 20 year old truck and as I pulled it up to review it, it started leaking transmission fluid, which is not good, but this is the only time I have available to review it, so the review must go on. We'll figure that out later. Moving underneath the hood, I have good news. I inspect it a little bit closer. Turns out it's actually not transmission fluid. It is engine coolant that's leaking, but it's just a hose, which is whoo, thank you God. It's not the entire reservoir that's leaking, just a little bit of a hose so I can get that replaced. No problem, I can do that. So the actual engine on this thing, let's talk about that. It's powered by a 4.7 liter V8, making 245 horsepower and 315 pound feet of torque. Now, interestingly, this was the first V8 that Toyota implemented on any of its trucks. The predecessor to this, the Toyota T100, that tried to compete in the US market only had an available V6. And a lot of the drivers were like, hey, if I'm going to be buying a full-size pickup truck, like a V8 option, so it really couldn't compete with the uh, Ram, with Ford and Chevy at the time. So to really get their, their truck out there, Toyota adopted this V8 for this 2000 model year. This is actually the first year of the Toyota Tundra, which I think is pretty cool. Moving on to the profile of the truck, there's not too many features on the side right here, but there is one I wanted to highlight specifically, and that's because you don't really see it anymore on trucks, barring maybe the F-150, and that's a rear suicide door folding out like this. I think the F-150's extended cap still does that, but pretty much everybody else has moved to a traditional door in the back um, because you're not gonna get a B pillar right here. I think it's built into the door right there, which is quite interesting. But back seat leg room, you do get quite a lot. And this extended cab is fairly roomy um, just in its whole cab. It's not gigantic. I honestly think it is the perfect size for a pickup truck. It's right in between what the current full size is and what the current mid size is. It's a tad bit bigger than my Tacoma but it's not huge, which I really like. I think it's quite a manageably sized truck. One more cute little feature on this rear door of the Tundra is that this window actually does not fold down. Rather, it pops out like that. That gives me a lot of memories from when we used to have an Oldsmobile silhouette and the rear windows on that did the same thing. That's a really nice feature. You really never see that anymore. So let me give you guys a little bit of a backstory on this truck, and then maybe you can help me solve a little bit of a mystery. So initially, when we went to buy this truck, we were looking for just a work truck for my brother. So I'm going off to college in two weeks. Well, by the time this video is out, I'll, I'll be at college. But as of right now, I'm going off to college in two weeks, and I am taking my Toyota Tacoma to college. Free parking, woohoo! So we wanted to get my brother a pickup truck because we both landscape and obviously he doesn't want to lose those landscaping customers that aren't in walking distance. So we had the max price range of about five grand for a truck. We just wanted a basic work truck, but of course we were looking for Toyotas and it is so hard to find a Toyota under five grand. It's nearly impossible to find anything under 250,000 miles under $5,000, even 20 years old. The resale value of these trucks is insane. But we looked at a lot of stuff. We looked at Fords, we went out and we looked at a Chevy. Um, very interestingly, this is a little dealer tip. So this was at a dealership. Uh, it was a Chevy S10, it was a 2002, kind of a mid-trim model. Again, we didn't really care about the trim for him. We were like, okay, we'll just get him something that's a work truck. And all the pictures looked really good. Had 150,000 miles, we're like, not bad. They dropped the price to 3,000. That was a little suspicious how quickly they dropped it. It was like 4,500, and then in a day, it just dropped to like 3,000. We're like, that's weird, but you know, that could be cool. So we went out and we took a look at it, and on the ad, said nothing about being a smoker's vehicle, and that was obviously what we wanted to know initially, right up front. So we got out there for the S10, and it was a dump. I mean, it looked like they put the pictures up on cars.com and then hit the car with a bunch of baseball bats and ripped out all the interior. I mean, it was bad. Like we got out there, there was way more dense than there was in the pictures. Uh, the tailgate like barely opened. The whole headliner was hanging down. 
and it had that awful smell when people try to get cigarette smell out of a car. Uh, so it, it had that awful, like really foamy, overtly clean smell. And then you could see there was a bunch of cigarette burns in the driver's seat. Obviously we were like, this is not the truck. This is ridiculous. No wonder they can't sell this thing. I mean, it, it is at best a farm truck, maybe a thousand dollars. We didn't even test drive it. We went out, we looked, we went, nope. And uh, so we were kind of discouraged. We were like, are we ever gonna find anything in this price range? And my brother didn't have any more money. So blessing from God, I was on let go, perusing the, the site and my, I think my dad and me found this truck at the same time. And it has rust on the bumper, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, I went, oh, there's a little bit of rust in the bumper, I don't know if I'm a big fan of that. And we kind of put this truck off to the side. And then once we looked at the S10, we looked at a couple more trucks. We, we, there was an F-150 we looked at. Uh, and it was great because I love when people say this, they go, uh, truck's in great shape, really good condition, needs a brand new transmission, but other than that, I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 uh, did you say it needs an entirely new transmission? Oh, yeah, 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 but it's in great shape. That's, That's not great right. shape. So we went out and we looked at the truck, eh, it's okay, but um, we came back to this, we kind of circled back to this Tundra, and I went out and I looked at it, my brother and my dad were on a trip, so I went out and looked, and, uh, it was amazing. I mean, it drove, honestly, this truck drives as good as my Tacoma. And I do not say that in hyperbole, I mean it. I mean, this truck is really smooth, handles great for a 20 year old truck. I was like, this is it. I, I prayed beforehand. I was like, God, this is the truck. I was so excited, I told my brother. And it was a, a farm truck, essentially. It was on a, on a guy's property and he only used it around his property to like tow things that he needed short distances. Um, and he had bought it from a friend and so, this truck really hadn't been driven out in the road in a while. I have a feeling that's probably why the coolant's leaking, just because it hasn't been driven as much as we've been driving it uh, in the past week and a half. But, I mean, it handles great. I mean, really good. But let's see if we can solve this mystery here. So I got there, and I, and I had noticed, you know, on the ad that it was a Limited. And now here I'm thinking, oh, Limited, that's great. That's the, one of the top trims. I think this was the top trim back for the time. Probably has heated seats, you know, leather, sunroof maybe. It has none of those things. It does not have heated seats, leather, or a sunroof, which I was like, okay, so what makes this a limited? You know, I, I, I'm curious. Now, I work in cars um, apart from this. Uh, my other job, I work uh, and I sell car radios. I do speakers. I do remote start stuff like that. So I know that Toyota does JBL. So I said, oh, maybe this is a JBL sound system. So I got to the uh, truck and I was looking over it and there's no JBL badges on it. I'm like, okay, that's weird. So I guess it's not a JBL system either. So it's like the limited trim, but the base model of the limited. What I can figure out that makes it a limited, and this is, this is what I wanna know. What makes this truck a limited? I'll tell you guys what I think, and I can't really find anything on the forums. It has running boards. It has a sliding rear window, but it looks like that was an option for SR5s too. It has fog lights as standard, though again, that does look like it was an option for SR5s. Body colored mirror caps, that looks like it was only on the limiteds. And here's my favorite part, it does have a JBL system, secret JBL. So what happened was I was like, I'm gonna replace your radio and put a backup camera on this truck. And so I pulled the radio out and I got the non-JBL amplified harness for the head unit and I noticed it was the JBL harness. And I went, oh, dang. So I went to my other installer, and he's like, oh, yeah, even if it's not badged JBL, every Toyota Limited vehicle is a JBL sound system. I'm like, great, I wish I would have asked you that before. But, cool trick, there's a little install trick if you have one, so perhaps you're watching this and you're like, man, I wish I knew what I was doing here. Instead of buying the JBL amplified harness, what you can actually do is you can reach your hand down on behind the head unit if you have it pulled out and the, the amp for the JBL system is down there and you can actually unplug um, the traditional harness, the regular uh, Toyota harness and just plug it in that way. So that's what I did. Um, so I just unplugged the amp for the JBL system. It still sounds really good and put the new head unit in that way. So from what I can discover, the reason this is a limited, because it has cloth seats too, the reason this is a limited is it has running boards, uh, body colored mirror caps, maybe a, a, may, like the sliding window maybe in the back, and it has a secret JBL system and fog lights. But you know, obviously it was a different time. Really big contrast uh, between 20 years ago and now what may, constituted a luxury pickup truck. I mean, it, it doesn't even have power seats, but you know, it, it's so interesting how far we've come to see, oh wow, this, you know, limited, this was the top trim back then and it didn't even have any of that.
but how far we've come in luxury trucks. Moving to the back of the Tundra, here's the aforementioned very rusty bumper. Thankfully though, I have ordered another one for my brother. I'm gonna put that on there for him so he doesn't really have to worry about rust on the rest of this truck. There were some rusty spots underneath. I got it lifted up and then I had to sand some stuff down and spray some Rust-Oleum. But for the most part, it's fairly clean for how old it is. You'll have a towing capacity of up to 7,100 pounds. And then opening the bed here, you have a payload of 1,406 pounds. An interesting thing in the bed here, the entire functionality and purpose of this truck, it's very shallow. Did anybody else notice that? I mean, when we got this, we were like, wow, that's really odd. Like my Tacoma bed is, is deeper than this. And it's such a lifted truck too, it's kind of odd that the bed isn't any deeper. You'd think, oh, maybe there's a secret compartment underneath or something for a spare tire. Uh, there's not, the spare tire is just right underneath it. So kind of odd, but I guess I'll forgive Toyota because they were really just getting into the full-size truck game at this point. Um, but you think that would be one of the main priorities is to give it a deeper bed. But regardless, I think there's a six and a half foot bed. It's bigger than my Tacomas and definitely will come in a lot more handy. And of course, there is no uh, dampened tailgate on this. Moving into the interior of the Tundra, it's pretty basic by modern day standards, but there are a few features in here which are pretty cool. Something you really didn't see back in the day. Number one, if we close the door here, you got power windows, which I think was really interesting. Those were obviously starting to be adopted more widely in the early 2000s, but you were still getting a lot of vehicles with hand crank windows. More interestingly, this actually also has power mirrors. Now that also could be a limited feature. I'm not 100% sure. I was doing some Googling and it did look like the SR5s had them as well, but I think that's really nice. For a 2000 to have powered mirrors, that is pretty crazy. Additionally in here, one thing I really like is this has the traditional column shifter. I've mentioned in the past, I think the column shifter is the coolest truck shifter of all. I just think it's really, I don't know, manly or, or fun. It's just fun to pull the column shifter. It's just really nice. This also has a driver's side grab handle, which my Toyota Tacoma does not have and irks me. Interestingly though, moving to the passenger side, you get a passenger side grab handle and another passenger side grab handle, which is incredibly frustrating. I don't know why they couldn't even put one driver's side grab handle on my Tacoma, and the Toyota Tundra from the first generation gets two. That's whack. This truck also has four wheel drive down here, the buttons for that, and very interestingly, it has cruise control as well. I'm not sure how far back cruise control goes, but this does have that, and it's very similar to my Tacoma where it's actually connected to the steering wheel. I think that's cool. Though it does get a little confusing with the cruise control, the wiper stock, and the column shifter all in one spot here. I'll be honest, when my brother first got this truck, it took him a second to realize uh, which one to use to throw it into gear. So that's kind of fun. Another interesting feature we're not 100% sure about, but we're pretty sure we nailed down is we think this is a garage door opener container. It's not glasses, because we can't fit glasses in here. None of the glasses we tried would actually slide up into here. So we think this is for a garage door opener. So you hit this button and it opens your garage. Very early 2000s kind of like luxury thing. Like, oh, a garage door opener. Wow. One thing I never got about the manual sliding windows in the back was like, how am I going to reach that? Like, what if I'm going down the highway and it starts pouring rain? Like, you really got to pick and choose when you're going to open that window back there. So, you know, that's interesting. And then also, this is cool. I'm gonna try to hold the camera and reach back here. You get a fold down center armrest in the back for your rear passengers with cup holders. I think that's really nice as well. I just have to mention these seats too. I've been driving this truck a little bit more than my own Tacoma, just doing maintenance and stuff on it for my brother over the past couple of days. And these seats are just as comfortable as my Tacoma, if not more comfortable. They're so plush. They truly do not make trucks like they used to. And, uh, that, that can be seen on this first gen. And that's why I titled this video the way I titled it because it is truly awesome, just really well built. And here's the thing, we've looked at a lot of trucks from this generation, a lot of trucks from this generation and feeling their buttons and their knobs and their switches and everything like that, they all felt dinky. I mean, 15 year old trucks we looked at felt dinky when moving certain switches and knobs, but this 20 year old Toyota Tundra 
the buttons still feel solid. They, they feel like almost like you would have gotten them out of the manufacturing plant off the dealership lot. I mean, truly, this truck really feels like it was handcrafted and built to the highest standard. And it really, really shows on this truck. I mean, it made it 20 years so far. And in this next driving segment, I'm going to answer the burning question you guys all have. How much did this truck cost and how many miles are on it? Alrighty, now it's time to drive the truck and answer everyone's two burning questions. How much did my brother pay for the truck and how many miles are on it? Huge blessing. Um, we paid 4700 for the truck, which is the best deal I could find on a Tundra. Uh, bar none. I mean, I mean, I couldn't find anything in that price range that was in as good condition as this truck. I mean, this truck runs great. It, it, it handles so well for a 20 year old truck and I understand why people get first gens and I understand why people say first gens are the best Tundras and why the second gen Tacomas are some of the best Tacomas. I mean they truly are built strong and tough and powerful and then to answer your second follow up question there is 179,888 miles on this truck. So we got a Toyota Tundra with under 200,000 miles for under $5,000, which is such a crazy blessing from God. Thank you so much, God. If you guys are new here, I am a Christian and I love all of you guys. And I wanted to interact with my audience a little bit more because I do try to reply to every comment, but I thought the best way to do that was to ask for a prayer request. If you have any prayer requests, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I will be praying for it. I also do a daily Bible verse. Here that is. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I love all of you guys. I love that I can do this, that I can review these vehicles and, and be fun and jokey and myself. I get to be myself on camera and YouTube pays me. That's the craziest thing about all of this. Such a blessing. Take care guys. I'll see you next time. So once I concluded the driving segment, I dropped it at my mechanic. We talked for a bit and initially at the beginning of the video, I said, oh, it looks like it's leaking transmission fluid. But then after looking at a little, little bit closer, it looked like it was leaking engine coolant. And I was right about both because they mixed, which isn't good. Um, his guess is it's either the radiator that has stopped working or a, a hose with the radiator. He said that's fairly common on these older Tundras. Now, I know I'm gonna get comments from Chevy people and Ford people that have stuck around this long maybe even dodge people as much as i like the rams that'll say ha my truck's better than yours blah 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 yeah look your toyota isn't as good as you thought it was well the reason i'm including this segment at all is to show you guys that every truck has problems even toyotas i mean it's a 20 year old truck you gotta expect it to have issues no truck is perfect but i still believe that this tundra was a huge blessing because for what it is uh, it's in very good shape otherwise and so you know, I'm just kind of giving you guys the details about what's going on right now and uh, what it could be. And, you know, if it is the radiator and we got to uh, flush the fluid, that's okay. You know, you live and you learn and sometimes your car has issues. But uh, that's really the reason I wanted to film this is to kind of fill you guys in about what's going on. Take care. Have a great day.